Hey, 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 welcome in live and direct. It's the CJ Silas Show on ESPN Radio 1280 AM and FM 101.7, the ticket. We haven't done this very often because of COVID. We haven't had people in the studio. And there was no way I could do this interview over the phone because one of my Syracuse sisters is now the new sports director at KSBY here in San Luis Obispo. Casey Busher on the CJ Silas Show. Hello, welcome in. Hello, I'm so excited to be here. Uh, this, CJ's the best. This is weird. Can we take off our masks? Okay, wait. If we're going to take off our masks, yes. then what you're going to do is you're going to pull your mic as far away from me as you can, and we can do it live. This is what we do. Yep. And we're going to, yeah, because we're going to stay six feet, because it just sounds weird with the masks, okay? Texas Tech, <laughs> Syracuse, Abilene, Texas, and, and San Luis Obispo. How the heck did you find San Luis Obispo? I honestly saw this job opening, and I was like, what is San Luis Obispo? But I saw California, and I was like, okay, I've always wanted to live in California. Oh my goodness. And I looked it up, and I'm like, this is the most beautiful place ever. I, I have to apply. Uh, and I saw it was, you know, the Santa Barbara market. One of my, like, idols in the industry, I don't know if we've talked about this before, but Lindsay Rhodes got her second gig in Santa Barbara as a yes. director. So I'm like, okay, I'm just going to go for it. No way I get the job. So I fly, and I interview, and they like me. I'm like, what? Okay, cool. I'm moving to California. Oh well, welcome to San Luis Obispo. When is your first night on the air? Is it tonight? It was actually Friday. I didn't okay. I forgot to tell you. Oh, what? Um, so I did okay. a quick like live hit on Friday. Okay. And Monday was my first anchoring. So my first full week of anchoring is this week. Listen, you didn't even tell me, so I haven't even horrible. watched. I'm horrible. And I'm horrible because I haven't watched. So what was your live shot on Friday? What did you um, do? I did it on the Parks and Recreation Center here okay. and just how they're continuing to have camps because they have, they're have they having a bunch of camps over the last few months with kids. Yeah. but. Just social distancing them, you know, at camp, so um, you know parents can continue to have their kids do stuff, yes. especially because a lot aren't in school right now. So that was what my story was on, and I talked with the department and how they're, you know, adjusting during this time. It's crazy. She not only went to Texas Tech for undergrad, she got her master's at Syracuse. She was a stage manager at ESPN. She covered the Armed Forces Bowl for ESPN in 2016. Sidelines for ACC. You are really qualified, and it's interesting. When I heard about you, I was right away attracted to the fact that you were from Syracuse. And I thought it was undergrad. I didn't do my homework. I hadn't yet. And I'm thinking, oh, my goodness, this is so cool. And what's neat for me, and it might sound weird, is at you're in your 20s. I'm in my 50s. To be able to be in the same town with you, Casey, and kind of, I can kind of be your mama bear. It's weird because when I was coming out into the business in the early 90s, I didn't have any mama bears. I had papa bears and they were jerks. Nobody cared. Even for the guys from Syracuse were like, uh, yeah. How does it feel to be in an area where you're going to actually have, we're going to have this super cool relationship? Oh my gosh, it's the coolest. <laughs> so in my last market in Abilene slash San Angelo, Texas, I was the only girl in, uh, in the market. Yeah. So it's like, I was great friends with the guys that were my age, but you know, the older guys, not, not as accepting, <laughs> I guess. Right. Um, yeah. But this is incredible. And like when I met you and I, and I uh, found out that you were working here, I'm like, this is the greatest thing. Cause not only are you a woman and a baller one at that Thank in, this, you. In, in doing radio, but you went to Syracuse. So it's like the greatest <laughs> thing ever. I can't even imagine what it was like when you were breaking into the industry and didn't really have a lot of women, especially by your side, but not even that many to look up to because right. there weren't that many women in the sports industry. How are you doing it at KSBY? Because it's TV, it's easy to do radio interviews over the phone. How is television sports handling covering things with this new COVID world? It's been so different. I mean, Zoom's been the best friend. So uh, we went out to Cal Poly Baseball last week, which we did do an in-person interview with Coach, you know, mask on all the time, of course. And then this week, uh, Zoom interviews mainly. So that's what a lot of television has been this year, which, you know, it doesn't, it's not the best quality, right? When you have a right. Zoom interview and you record it and you put it on television. But I feel like now people are used to it and they almost respect it when they watch TV and they know that they're doing Zoom interviews, these reporters and anchors and things like that, and not, you know, putting their health at risk and also the people that they're interviewing and things like that. Um, so, yeah, I would say Zoom has been like my best friend all year. And any events or games that I've covered, we haven't had in-person press conferences. They've all been over Zoom. So it's just been a big adjustment in, in doing that. But it's a lot easier, you know, not lugging around the camera. Oh, my gosh. <laughs> and, you, and you can just wear a nice shirt and, oh, and, and shorts. Yeah, no one, or you no could one just else. Yeah, you, or you could just wear a nice shirt. And right? that's, yeah. <laughs> that's it. <laughs> careful, careful. <laughs> Let's be careful. And Texas was the same thing. Yes, yes. All Zoom. All Zoom. Uh, Texas Tech. 
Syracuse, you have been at two of the best universities in this country. And I'm thinking about coaches that you've interviewed that have left a lasting impression on you. Who would you say is number one? Goodness. Uh, so I came to Texas Tech and Cliff Kingsbury was the coach. So that was pretty sweet. Um, and then Chris Beard is the current head coach for the basketball team at Tech. And he's been, I mean, like probably the most successful in Tech history. And he hasn't even been there that long. I just love who he is as a person, and like he came kind of from nothing. Um, for a while, he he was he was on Bob Knight's coaching staff, and oh, when wow. they got fired, he, he didn't have anything. His wife left him, and he kind of had to build this whole new career for himself. I mean, at the middle of his career, and then he finds himself back at Texas Tech, absolutely killing it, Elite Eight, Sweet Sixteen, Final Four, champ, national championship run. Last, I guess what that was before the pandemic here. Um, everything is before the pandemic. I know, right? So, <laughs> it's, it's everything is going to be like you know, like BC and stuff. Now it's yep. going to be um, B for twenty twenty. Yep. Yeah. Horrible. B pandemic. BP. BP COVID. B. So I don't know. Oh my gosh. But yeah, so Chris Beard, rock star, and then you know Bayheim is just another animal. What were your interactions like with him? So I think I told you earlier, but I never asked a question in a press conference. <laughs> at I was so nervous. He's going to embarrass me. But I mean, all the undergrads, right? Like they're just rock stars, like already, you know, going to get TV, uh, radio jobs out of school and everything. But they would always ask questions in Bayheim. I think he thought it was a joke to just kind of like make fun of him. Roast always. Him. So I'm like, all right, I don't really want to be a part of that. So I'm just not going to ask a question. Oh my so. gosh. I'm but, sorry you didn't because he's I gotten know. a lot more, he's gotten a lot more gentle with reporters over the years. Yeah, I really should have. Maybe one day. Yeah. Maybe one day. Bob Costas was getting inducted into the WAER Hall of Fame. And I flew out to New York City and the event was at 30 Rock. Wow. And Bayheim was there. And Bayheim was very difficult to interview. And he still is, I mean, he's not like a Belichick or Popovich, mm -hmm. but he was difficult in my time. Mm -hmm. And I went up to him at that event maybe four years ago. Gosh, I don't remember how long ago it was, but it was not that long ago. And I said, hey, I just want you to know that even though you were hard on us and tough on me, you really did kind of create for me a space where I always thought, well, you're not as hard as Beheim was. And yeah. so we had a little oh bit of a gosh, laugh. Yes. And he was like, he said, so well, I'm going to take that sort of as a compliment. I said, I guess you can. <laughs> and then when I spent last summer in Providence, uh, Belichick and his press conference oh. was very similar to Beheim. Yes. So it's like I've seen two of the worst press conference coaches. <laughs> and like, you can't be worse, you know? So uh, yeah. But I mean, it makes you think about your questions. All right. And what I'm asking, is it worth asking? Like, is it actually a thought out question? Um, so, I mean, I definitely learned in that way, journalistically. You know? Yeah, and you learn early never to use the yes or no questions because yeah. those are the coaches that are going to say yes yep. or no. And that's it because okay. they really respect people that have aged on their homework and be are intelligent people. Mm -hmm. I, I've never interviewed Popovich and I've never in interviewed Belichick. And I don't think I would be intimidated now because I feel very confident about my interview skills. In fact, I'd be challenged to yeah. talk to them. But I think as a young person, I would have probably been freaking out oh i was freaking out <laughs> i was like don't look them in the eyes <laughs> like, just, oh like, <laughs> come on that's the best thing it's, and they <laughs> love that right they love when they get you get looked in the eye because that means you're not that afraid right. or intimidated by that's it. true you were in the major league baseball bubble for the nlcs and the world series i'm just getting the chills just thinking about it and you're not a dodger fan you grew up uh, other places you're not from California. Mm -hmm. As an objective journalist covering NLCS, what was it like? Objective, by the way, as opposed objective. to me. Yeah. Well, this is the problem. My, one of my best friends was covering it with me, and he's just like you, the most diehard Dodger fan I've ever met in my life. And so that was always around me. So it like felt like I was kind of an honorary Dodger fan for the good, good, good. I was there, good. right? So uh, I mean, I had no pull either side because I went into it. I mean, I'm a Rangers fan, I guess. But when Josh Hamilton all that stuff happened, I kind of just faded uh, out. Yeah, we've had a rough, we've had a rough history with Rangers. Um, so yeah, I didn't really have like either way. But of course, with the you know the history of the Dodgers and wanting that World Series and it's taken so long oh it's gosh. like I wanted it for them and for Kershaw just an incredible human being I feel like everything I've read about him is just great and the work he does in Africa and all these things I, it's like I wanted it for him and um and it, so it, it was incredible she brought me oh, <laughs> an official score sheet from the bubble from game six I 
cannot believe you got me this. Yes, and I think this I have a so game five one from NLCS. So I need to bring that to you too. And it has Gonsolin in it and Snell. Like this is legit. Oh, Thank God. you for. Th and I just met you, and you just know that I'm. I would be so happy and excited to see this. I'm just. Ha! Oh yeah, we're definitely gonna. Uh, yeah, we're gonna. I'm a little speechless. What about the World Series? How much interviewing did you get to do of the players on what? either side? None. You didn't get to do any of the Zooms. Only were, oh, well, yeah, Zooms. But Just you were Zooms. in a big group on the Zoom. Big it was groups. never one on one. No. Did you ever ask any questions? I actually didn't. You were, were you nervous? I or? just felt like, you know, this was, um, I, I was so honored to be there, right? Yes. But it's like these LA reporters and, and anchors and, you know, Atlanta and then with Tampa Bay, I'm like, I don't deserve to ask a question. I, like, I mean, like, I'm so lucky I even got credentialed to come yes, here and cover it. Yes, yes, I feel So you. I just kind of wanted to soak it all in. And then it's like these LA reporters and, you know, I mean, I, I just love LA. So that's why I'm talking about LA so much. But um, they're, they're so legendary. Why would I ask a question? I'm like, I want to learn from them, listen to their questions, and so kind of smart. soak it all in. You know what I mean? Um, I just didn't feel like I deserved to ask a question. Yeah. I wasn't there all those years with the Dodgers, you know, right. suffering and waiting. I'm like, oh I my gosh. Have a question. She's Casey Busher, KSBY Sports Director. Find her at Casey Busher TV, Casey.Busher at KSBY.com, and you can watch her on the 6 p.m. and the 11 p.m. tonight on KSBY. Thanks again. Yes, of course. Thanks for having me on.